What phase of needing a haircut are you in? Because I'm in this phase. Welcome to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith and today I'm bringing you my April wrap up. This is everything I read in April, some of it is piled up next to me, some of it is in the digital ether, but editing Judith is going to very kindly put all of the covers on screen so that you can enjoy them. And yeah, we're going to chat about what I read this month. I thought that I'd only managed to read my TBR, I hadn't excelled, hadn't exceeded expectations, I was sad and disappointed and then I realised that I read one more book than was on my TBR. So let's all just celebrate me for a moment. Well, thank you, well, thank you. I also lowered my bunting so that we can be slightly closer to me but still have the bunting in. I don't know, I'm just, I didn't want to set up the camera over there. So we're gonna film in my reading chair. I'm kind of almost the same colour, it's fine, it's fine. The first book I read this month was Ashley Poston's Bookish and the Beast. This is the third book in her Once Upon a Con series. This is a YA contemporary series. Each book has been a different fairy tale retelling. This one is obviously Beauty and the Beast. I had to think about that then. So we have this fictional universe where there's a kind of Star Wars, Star Trek, esque thing called Starfield. All the characters love it or star in the films and yeah basically we follow these characters in romance, their romance is really, but like romantic situations. I thought this one was good. I think it's not my favourite of the series. I like Princess and the Fangirl better. I think this is the least believable. All of them are fairly unbelievable, but this one kind of takes the cake for I don't really think that would happen. And if you want to see me rant about how the cover is wrong, <laughs> not rant, mention that the cover is wrong, then you can go and check out that vlog. <laughs> Next was my reread of The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. This was last read by me a couple of years ago I think and I quite enjoyed it on a reread. What I do think about this series as a whole, the Name of the Wind series, I think, King Killer Chronicles, something like that, is that they're not great if you're like me and you don't like characters who make bad decisions. Like even if it's completely understandable that that character would do that, you're still there going like, why have you spent all your money? You are now in debt again, you fool. Yeah, so if you get frustrated at things like that, you might have a frustrating time reading this. I wouldn't be sending everyone out there saying, oh, well, if you read fantasy, you've got to read Name of the Wind. I'd say, look, you're okay with other things. There are other things you can read. Then I read N.K. Jemison's The City We Became. I think this is probably up in one of my top books of the year so far, and I know we're only a quarter of the way through, but oh boy, no, a third of the way through. We're a third of the way through, it's definitely up there. Um, I really, really enjoyed this. This is a fictional, an alternate New York, in a world where cities have kind of personas, and I think this is a series, so we're gonna get more of them, hopefully seeing different cities. Basically, at the start of the book, New York is being born, effectively, in the modern day. Five different personas, each for different areas of New York, are chosen, selected. These people come into being, and yeah, the book follows them and I just think it's beautifully written. It's really lyrical but still gritty and I think it's my favourite N.K. Jemison I've ever read and I adored the Broken Earth trilogy so that's saying something. I want to read more of this series already and I know I'm gonna have to wait for it and I'm annoyed about it. <laughs> Next I read Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Bashar Doost, the author of Girls of Snow and Glass which I've read before. I thought that this was okay. I like that she drew on Persian influences, it wasn't just a straight kind of very western fairy tale. I'm really sorry about the echo, it's just very echoey in here today. Overall I was kind of eh about this. I think that the story is good, the writing is good, it's just nothing that tipped it over the edge for me. I'd say it was perfectly adequate and if you enjoy YA and you like a bit of a weird romance, maybe go for it. I, I wouldn't be saying this is a must read. Next I read The Mermaid, The Witch and the Sea by Maggie Takuda Hall. This was another one where I thought it was going to be really good and it wasn't bad, it just didn't quite hit all the right notes for me towards the end. I thought the ending felt kind of flat, but it's a lovely queer narrative. You've got these characters finding out who they are, exploring their gender identity, female pirates, I mean. It's, it's good stuff and I should have loved every second of it. And maybe it's partly that this isn't the climate where I wanna be reading this kind of stuff, I don't know. I think if you are looking for queer books, it would be a good option for you. Next, I read The Skyweaver by Kristen. Kikarelli, Chicharelli, Kicharelli, I'm still not sure. My notes for this just say, why did this book exist? And I think that kind of sums up. I was frustrated by this series as a whole because book one is so good. It's so good. I think I got it in a fairy loot box and was blown away by it. And then from there, it's just gone. And it was really disappointing, especially to have a book with, again, a queer narrative, again, with pirates, but not, not pull it off for me. I don't know. I think I feel 10 times more cheated when I should love a book and then it turns out to be kind of there. After that, I finished my audiobook of Dragon Keeper by Robin Hobb. Yes, 
I've read them out of order, I'm going back and reading Ship of Magic now, you can all calm down. I really loved it though. I don't think it was spoiled by not having read the previous books. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but I think it was fine. I really enjoy any time you've got a female character who's an academic of some sort, amateur or professional, who goes and studies things. It's probably my favourite genre. It really reminded me of Turning Darkness Into Light, which was one of my top books of last year, I'll be honest. I know everyone and their mum has already read Robin Hobb and I am late to the party, but yeah, go for it. Then I finished The Doors of Eden by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I think I go into this a bit more detail in my vlog, so you should probably go and watch that. But basically, I thought that this was, broadly speaking, very good. A lot of it went over my head. I'm not a huge sci-fi reader. I'm not a huge kind of cryptid brained person. I think Justine is probably going to do a wonderful review of this at some point and if she doesn't then we'll all just be sad and cry. But I wasn't 100% sold on some of the representation in the book. Uh, just it didn't all sit quite right with me. That's all I'll say. I go into a bit more detail in the vlog. Next I read the other physical arc of the month. This was The Camelot Betrayal. This isn't out till November. It's probably even later now because everything's being pushed around publication dates are weird. I thought this was good. I didn't like it as much as the first one and as a whole the series is kind of in a bit of a it could go either way for me. It could be really good or it could completely tank. I think that it needs to be gayer. There's a gay relationship within the book and I still think it should be gayer. That's just me. There was a few things where it was kind of like a threat was set up and then nothing came of it or it felt like it fell kind of flat and maybe that's building for a later book. Maybe that's just me. Yeah, I wasn't 100% wasn't sold on this, but I still had a really good time reading it. I'm looking forward to the third book in all of a year and a half, which is the problem with reading these things early, Judith, pull yourself together. Then I finished my reread of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I don't want to talk about Harry Potter too much, I've seen previous videos for why. I had a really good time reading this. I think this is probably my favourite. I think some of the background world building is some of the best in this book. There's the most Fred and George, which is always something I enjoy. We have the chaos that is Umbridge. I just... I have a good time with this book. Then I finished and then came The Flood by Lacey Root. This is a book of poetry that I picked up a long time ago, so this was a reread. I had a lovely time reading this. It's great poetry. It's very young poetry, I guess is what I would say, was the overwhelming feeling I had. It's very like, let's be in love and dive off cliffs and things, and I was kind of like, mm, I'm a little bit more cynical than this. But it's really good fun to read. If you like poetry, check out Lacey Root. Next I picked up Strata by Terry Pratchett. This is just a little novella, it's not Discworld. Discovering a flat earth, the kind of terraformers, I guess, sort of. I think this went over my head. Uh, I talked about in the vlog, it felt like very conceptual, but not a lot of story. It felt very similar to Colour of Magic for me, and I don't like Colour of Magic very much. So yeah, would not necessarily recommend, unless you're desperately trying to read everything Terry Pratchett's ever written, in which case, go for it. Maybe on a reread it would be better. I'm just gonna sit back. And then I reread The Tangled Lands. This is so good and so underrated. I've not heard anyone else talk about this ever. And it's possibly, I don't know when this first came out. Yeah, 2018. Nobody talks about this. And it's, I think, very, very, very well written. I think it's because it's three, four, four, maybe five short stories or kind of no novelettes maybe. I don't know what the official distinction is. People don't generally go for those. I've read some terrible ones. There was that one which had clocks involved. I can't remember, but this is beautifully written. It's great world building, it's really interesting characters. It's sort of like all the backstories of the world in an epic fantasy novel, I guess. That was the feeling I had. And yeah, I, I think if you're looking for something shorter to get your teeth into, this would be a recommendation. Then I had my one bonus read, late night, middle of the night, can't sleep, what's in the library reading, and that was These Divided Shores by Sarah Rush. I didn't really enjoy this. It was another eh book. How many times am I going to say eh in this video? This is the sequel to These Rebel Waves and I like These Rebel Waves enough. It was weirdly marketed as a pirate book and it's got nothing to do with piracy so that was odd. The sequel I didn't 100% enjoy. I think much like Mask of Shadows which I'll come on to, I think it would probably be good if you read them in very quick succession which is actually what I did with her Snow like ice, something like that, ice like fire, ash. All of those words are involved in the four books. Um, I did that with that series. I read it all in one go and I had a good time. And I think that possibly for her writing, it just needs that. The lasting impression it had on me, because I read it in the middle of the night and I can't remember quite a lot of it, was that it was people being put in prison, escaping from prison, 
getting captured, being put in prison, escaping from prison, until the end of the book. That was how it felt to me, anyway. Next, I read The Girl in Red by Christina Henry. This is a retelling of Little Red Riding Hood, but set in a post-apocalyptic world, post-virus that makes people cough, and then bad things happen. And it was probably the wrong book to read in this current climate that we're in. If you're not averse to that, if you're looking for something to read, I thought this was okay. It is half a book. It really, really is. It's half a book. The ending is so abrupt, and there are so many unanswered questions, and so much time spent in the backstory that could be sent in this present. I don't think there's a sequel planned, and it feels like there should be. I was very confused by this, but the actual conceit of it was quite good. I just think it was an idea that was had. I'd say, get it out of your library, and you can see what annoyed me about it. Then I read A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kimmerer. This is the sequel to A Curse So Dark and Lonely. Did A Curse So Dark and Lonely need a sequel? I don't think so. I wasn't 100% happy with this. I think that broadening it out to more characters and more different point of view characters, more importantly, was an interesting choice and could have worked and it would have been nice to get some new fresh blood in here and to turn the tables of the story and reset your main character and blah 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 blah, except that I didn't think there was enough distinction in the actual voice of the different characters for it to be kind of stick with you. I think it might be different if you're in an audiobook format because you might get the different tones of voice more than you do in this, but I kept forgetting whose chapter I was in because everyone just felt the same level, the same tone. That was just my feeling. I will definitely continue with this series. I think that I'm interested to see what they do with Ren's character as this goes on. I think that could be a really cool exploration. But overall, I think that Cursed Up and Lonely is the stronger book. After that, I finished the audiobook of Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie. This was good. I enjoyed this a lot. I'm going to read the next one this month and then I will have finished this trilogy, which is quite exciting. Always nice to finish a trilogy, especially backlist stuff. I don't know, it just brings me joy. I listened to this on audiobook. I don't actually recommend that in the same way as I would with other things. I think I got more lost in the audiobook than I did in the physical. And I think it's because a lot of the settings are very similar. And I kept forgetting who was in which camp with who and fighting who and what side they were on. And that's partly my useless memory. This wasn't the best in audiobook form, basically is what I'm saying. But I did have a good time. Uh, and I really like these characters. I think they're so kind of interesting. Very rarely, especially when I've read a lot of YA, very rarely do you get a focus on bad people. Uh, and I think Joe Abercrombie writes that really well. I'm looking forward to reading the third one and then reading other things. And yeah. Next, I read Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Timmy Adeyemi. I thought I wasn't going to enjoy this. I don't really know what made my brain think that. I think I just put it off for quite a while. I thought maybe it would be a bit overhyped, which I kind of felt with the first one. But actually, I thought this was really good. It went very quickly, which I needed at that point. It was getting close to the end of the month. But also, these characters are good. I liked how it twisted some of the characters and motivations are very interesting in this book. I think a lot of YA gets caught up in the idea of both power and sacrifice and I think this book does some interesting things with those and yeah I will happily read the rest of the series which I wasn't expecting. I thought this was going to be my kind of oh now I'm done. I'm looking forward to further books in this series. Then I finished my reread of Mask of Shadows by Lindsay Miller. I really really enjoyed this. I was frustrated that I read this after Ruin of Stars, even though I'd read it before. You know, it, it makes sense if you watch all of my videos, which you should do. Go and watch all of them. There'll be a playlist somewhere. I stand by it. I think Ruin of Stars is less good because it has no structure to it, whereas this is so very clearly structured. It's a competition to become an assassin for the Queen. You go through different stages. There are different objectives. It's very, very structured. And I had a similar feeling with her other book, Belle Revolt, that the bits that have structure are the best bits of that book. And I think with YA, often structures are really important because your word count and your world building is so slim that you have to fit things in and having predictable beats to a story is helpful. I really, really enjoyed this. I liked reading it again. I would read the whole series again probably now. I say series, duology, you know what I mean. And last, I finished Kirsten White's Chosen yesterday. I'm filming this on the first. Please be proud of how organised I am. Didn't 100% like this book. I'll be honest, I still think it's good. I think it's well written. I think it's a good book. I can't speak to the buffiness of it in particular detail, although there are some characters from the original series in this, uh, which may be a selling point or a negative point to you, depending on your attitude. I am gonna, there we go, that's a bit less bright. What bothered me most is that the main character is very intelligent. And I think we knew that from book one, like she's 
trained to be a watcher, she knows what she's doing, and in this book she just felt profoundly stupid, and they keep saying like, oh you're such a Hufflepuff, you're so trusting, and while I think that's not a negative trait, it bothered me because often she was trusting from a place of stupidity rather than a place of just being trusting. It was like, no, this person can definitely change when they'd consistently proved that they weren't going to. People have to prove that they could be trustworthy and people just weren't behaving in that way. It bothered me. No, I'm really pleased with how my reading last month went. I read everything I wanted to and really I can't ask for more than that. I can, but I shouldn't ask for more than that. Uh, I'm hopeful for May, I've got some really good stuff on my TBR, that's already up, you can go and watch that. And yes, please do subscribe and follow along with my vlogs, not only does it make me feel loved and appreciated, but also you'll get to hear much more detail about what I'm thinking about books, and also you get to see me first thing in the morning every single day. Who doesn't love that? <laughs> please do comment with if you've read any of these books, if you've got any of them on your list, if you've got any recommendations, I'm always available for recommendations, especially if it's audiobooks, because I'm bad at deciding on audiobooks. That's all from me, and I will see you in the next one. Making a pile of books, what did I read after that? What did I read after that?